Let's talk about maps today. Sadly, these maps do not lead to buried treasure or exotic new locations, but they do help you organize your data. A JavaScript map is simply a set of key value pairs, like this. Hold up, you might be crying. That looks like the same kind of data you'd store in an object. Well, yes, yes it is. And it's extremely possible to build large, complex JavaScript applications without ever using a map or a set, which we're going to get to next week. Trust me, I've done it. But I probably shouldn't have, especially now that maps are fully supported by basically any JavaScript engine you might want to run. Before we talk about differences, let's talk about, uh, okay, well, this is a difference too, but it's an implementation thing, how we create maps. Unlike objects, we can't just feed a map a bunch of keys and values in curly braces. We instead have to use an array of iterables whose values are key value pairs. In other words, an array of two value arrays, most of the time. Like this. You can also set them manually, like this. To retrieve a value, you don't use the dot syntax you'd use with an object. Instead, you use get, like this. We save that, and we'll see that it logs disgruntled goat. There are several fundamental differences between maps and objects, and they don't all fall in favor of maps, but often they do. For one thing, maps don't have prototypes the way objects do, which means that you can use any value as a key in a map. Whereas in an object, if you were to use, say, has own property as a key, you'd be overwriting the default object.hasOwnProperty method that gets inherited from the prototype, which could, and probably would, cause problems for you later down the line. This lack of prototypal inheritance also makes them safe to use with the for of loop. We talked about that in JS Quick Hits 4. This is a big deal because the for of loop is really handy, and only becomes a significant speed bottleneck if you're doing a lot of intense loops at once. Maps also work with for each, unlike objects. Using that method always provides the values. Here's an example of both uses. The first one's going to log the character names, and the second one's going to log all three keys. Of course, it helps to save the file. There we go. Additionally, object keys are always strings or symbols, which people rarely use, so mostly strings. This means even if you define an object like this, you're not going to get strings when you access its keys, like this. Save and refresh, and you can see that those are strings. Not so with map, which can take basically anything, including functions and objects, as keys. This actually gives us an iterator named map iterator, which retains all of the appropriate keys. Observe. Save, refresh, map iterator, and as you can see, it's retaining our very strange keys. Note that these arrows here are not functions, this is just how a key value pair is represented. Here we see a function as a key, very strange but doable, and a value of Professor Frank. Another difference between maps and objects is that maps retain the order of their entries. So when you work with the adults variable we just defined, entry 0 is always going to have a key of 0 and a value of Homer. Entry 2 is always going to have a key of a function returning null and a value of Professor Frank. That's hugely useful because JavaScript's random reading of objects is often a real pain to deal with. Another small but useful difference? Getting an object's size requires you to manually iterate through the object, ignoring prototype entries, and calculate how many key value pairs there are. With map? Well, you do this. Save. Three. Note that in some cases, maps are not the right choice. For example, since you lose the shortcut of dot notation, if you're just using simple objects, you may find that easier than using map.get all the time. Additionally, maps don't really have methods. You can set a function as a value and then execute that function with a call or apply like this. And if we save that, that'll work. But that's pretty annoying compared to just running, for example, adults.shoutName test. So if you're going to have a bunch of methods, an object's almost always a better solution. 
So that's the basics of maps. There's a ton more we could go into, but we're trying to keep this quick hit, well, quick. And this should give you plenty with which to get started. Next week, we'll talk about sets. See you then.